Next, uh, since this is Shanghai, we have to do a, a spotlight on media and entertainment. Uh, and we have Ning Wright, a partner of KPMG, uh, to moderate the next panel. Um, and uh, we have uh, as our panelists, Perry Chu, Managing Director of Steamboat Ventures, and Peter Lee of China Media Capital. Um, so I'll let Ning take it away. Thank you, Rebecca. Actually, I got the uh, luxury of having two panelists, so hopefully we don't have to ask too many questions. But that's not to stop you, but I think we're allocated extra five minutes for the additional panelists. So what we have been seeing in China is a lot of growth or talk about growth in the media and entertainment industry. There's a number of deregulation uh, policies and guidelines coming out, but how much of that, that is actually real demands and real money or how much of it is just talking. So perhaps in the next 20 minutes or so, we can find that out. So first of all, what do, we, what do you see in terms of uh, investment trends in the media and entertainment industry, both in terms of inbound and outbound in the entertainment industry? Maybe Perry, you can start first. Sure. Um, <coughs> Steamboat Ventures is a, is a venture fund affiliated with the uh, Walt Disney Company. So obviously we're a uh, foreign um, uh, US dollar fund. Um, in terms of the, um, the investment trend that we have seen, traditionally most uh, uh, US dollar funds uh, invest in China, uh, invest in peripheral um, and technology related deals. Uh, they try to stay away from content because of uh, the content risk. Um, and, and this is a fairly restricted sector for us to play. Uh, and, um, and although recently we start to see uh, um, some changes in this trend as well with, uh, uh, with companies uh, doing content also start to uh, take uh, US investments. My colleagues from, from GGV, for instance, they've, they've invested in some of the, <coughs> some of the content, pro content production animation companies. And I think that's also a trend that's actually happening. Yeah, and CMC uh, is one of the few uh, media and entertainment uh, sector folks uh, uh, fund uh, operating in China. We, you know, we have both an RMB fund and, and US dollar fund. And uh, uh, the uh, you know, past uh, portfolio of companies are mostly uh, in the content area. And we are actively looking at you know, the, uh, the distribution, the, the channels, the uh, entertainment related technology and so forth. So you know, we are branching out. And uh, uh, we think, you know, uh, you know, most of the uh, top guys in our company uh, are previously uh, media operators in China. So we do see ourselves and kind of uh, having expertise in the area. So we, uh, you know, this is kind of our competitive advantage. And uh, we uh, see, you know, uh, uh, talk to uh, you know high-level government officials all the time, and uh, and they do want to open up the, the sector, but they. Uh, do need advice uh, from, from, from the people they, they, they trust you know, in terms of the policy change, evolutions, uh, and also the uh, foreign partnerships. You know? So, uh, you know, all the, uh, the, the deal we have done uh, previously, most of them uh, do have international angles, including uh, our partnership with, uh, with, uh, with uh, News Corp, uh, Lupin Murdoch, our partnership with Dreamworks to establish a greenfield uh, uh, a company called Oriental Dreamworks, uh, you know, one of the very few uh, uh, projects with a uh, uh, very close uh, partnership with, with Hollywood. Uh. So we do uh, see an opening. Uh. Yeah. So in terms of uh, cross-border investment, both inbound and outbound, you mentioned a couple of projects. Um, you know, are there any challenges? I mean, we don't see like thousands of those deals going on. We see some. Um, the question is, you know, when will we see a bigger volume and when will we see a bigger return on the investment? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, we, uh, the, 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 uh, the media and, and, and industry, you know, wasn't an industry, you know, previously, you know, for historical reason, you know, it, you know, was, you know, pretty much government mouthpiece at the time. But we see uh, opening of China, uh, you know, uh, as a whole and, and, and the internet, the uh, uh, kind of the impact of internet. Uh, to the entertainment uh, sector, so the, the government does want to uh, know, stay uh, relevant. So they do realize that you know, so it's a, it's a new world. So they have to open up. They have to you know get aligned uh, with outside world. Uh, so you know, so they are you know discussing uh, in discussion with uh, many parties for them to 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 come up with a roadmap uh, on their own pace. You know, they don't want you know get pressure you know like from the, the foreign governments to to tell them what they do. But you know, so 
they uh, uh, do have you know different uh, committees, they did have different you know, commissions to do to studies and also talking to the private sectors to help them out to, to draft a uh, course. And the you know the uh, the challenge for us you know is uh, is because you know there are not many uh, successful multinational uh, media companies in China to begin with. So the the the, the talents are very limited. Who can you know uh, have uh, the expertise to uh, uh, to talk to both the local entrepreneurs, the local regulators, and also the foreign partners to make things to work. Uh, you know, this is one of the reasons that you know you don't see uh, uh, many projects like that. But but we, you will see more, more and more, both in inbound and outbound. Yeah. Perry, uh, what's your view? Yeah, in terms of uh, inbound investments into China, um, the digital media sector remains uh, I mean, widely <coughs> referred as the TMT sector remains probably the hottest um, area for <coughs> for investments. Um, yesterday, uh, Rebecca and I were in another panel, and we talk about the successes in the China's venture world. Um, and um, the three generations of, of, of successes started with the, uh, the 2000 through 2003, the Sina, the Sina Sohu Netties, followed by the second wave of the BAT, and then now the third wave of companies like Qihu and YY. So these are <coughs> major successes, and uh, which has also uh, cultivated the entire venture capital industry in China. Um, and uh, we believe this trend will continue, uh, and the next trend will come. And, and, and in, in fact, personally, I anticipate this probably going to come in the, in the next two to three years. And uh, my personal guess would be the next wave will be focused on mobile technology. But in terms of contents, do you see the Chinese regulators or the Chinese government would play a if you like, a stumbling block in terms of uh, the potential investment trends in this area? Uh, yes and no, you know, uh, you know, just, uh, just, not just having an example, you know, our, you know, partnership with, with Lubra Murdoch, you know, we uh, bought the uh, controlling stake of their, you know, assets in China, you know, called Star, you know, and, and so we basically added a, a production business, uh, which produce, you know, China Got Talents and, and also the hottest show, uh, and general entertainment show in China right now, the, the Voice of China. And the format was uh, from overseas. Uh, at, at one point, you know, the government you know, uh, uh, talked to uh, people, including us, into the whether to, to put some limitation on the, the, the format that China can, uh, can, can import. And uh, then we discussed with them, you know, this is just a format. And, uh, and with uh, the successful formats, then you can do lots of things, you know. And uh, many of the formats, you know, uh, can you know if you do do well, you know you, you you know you can use it to conform to the mainstream you know, value system in China. There's also no no conflict. So you know don't uh, do too too much out of it. You know for a particular show using a particular format, then you need to have a, a, a grant license. You now with with a sense censorship and so forth. But you know you don't do need to do anything uh, on the format itself, and the, the government listens and, and, and agrees. So then then you see all of a sudden. You know, uh, uh, you know, for the uh, last uh, years or, or, or two, then all of a sudden, m most of the hottest uh, uh, general entertainment of uh, reality shows are based on the, the following uh, formats, and the operators, TV operators, and 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 content producer uh, did pay for those fam formats. Two years ago, probably there was not much payment to them at all. You know, they were all just uh, copycats. Mm. True. Yeah. Perry, your view. <coughs> I think the the uh, the government obviously wants to have at least a control um, in terms of what kind of content the people in this country are seeing, but increasingly I think they have also been um, experimenting, at least in the areas that's less controversial to uh, allow much more market-oriented um, uh, practice and formats to be introduced. Uh, the a uh, flourish of, of all kinds of, uh, for instance, uh, voice-related, uh, basically uh, competitive um, songs and reality shows in China. Uh, they have done very well, uh, both in terms of commercial and also increase of China's status, uh, at least in Asia, of, 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 of its content. Um, I was in Taiwan recently, and I, I, I actually saw in some of the major uh, TV stations, they're actually broadcasting those shows uh, that are shot in China. Uh, they have widely also participated. Their, um, uh, their candidates has also participated in, in, these, uh, in these contests in mainland China. All these, I think, were uh, to a large 
I would say, to large credit to, to the producers and also to those stations who are able to take advantage of this um, relaxation in some of these formats. I mean, given the cultural uh, differences between China and the West, um, you know, what do you see will be interesting for the Chinese company who want to invest outbound? What sort of, uh, you know, what channel, what, what media, what forum or what channel can they go through and what type of company or assets they will be interested to, to acquire? Yeah. No, there are lots of, you know, uh, Western assets in China uh, who are on, on the block for, for sale and, and for, for partnership. Uh, for any of the major deals, you know, they uh, do you know have teams and advisors and bankers, you know, to to look for uh, Chinese partners. Uh, partly uh, due to the fact that you know the uh, U.S. You know, media market, you know, it's a kind of mature market. There's not much, not much growth at all, and there's uh, uh, probably uh, more con con consolidation uh, in Hollywood um, as a whole. So there won't be uh, as many studios going going forward. Um, so they, uh, you know, to survive, uh, they need to have, you know, fresh capital and they need to have, you know, expand their business into, into the new, mar uh, new markets. So they all want to have the China angle, you know, China will be the, you know, it's, will be the second largest media market uh, in China after, after the U.S. So the, the, all the assets in there, uh, the, but the, the, the problem is that, you know, if you do anything, you know, what kind of value add, you know, other than, you know, Helping those companies to uh, to to expand their business in China. Uh, now, for for that, you know, a JV can do the, do the work. You know, instead of investing into the holding company where you don't have the talents to to to, to manage, and if they are in trouble, then you know what? You know, can you do anything? So, if it's a JV, if there's trouble and we know the talents here, we know the management team, then we can you know uh, do a restructure ourselves to to control our risk. So, the lack of of, of talents who can have international uh, experience and who can uh, manage Western companies is uh, probably the biggest challenge. So th there's no shortage of money and then there's no shortage of desire, both from the government side or from the private sector side, you know, to, to buy those assets, you know, uh, mm. uh, which are perceived relatively cheap. Yeah. Mm. Um, <coughs> from, from my vantage point, um, I want to say there, there are generally speaking two kinds of, uh, two kinds of assets that recently have become very strong candidates for, for Chinese um, uh, technology companies, uh, specifically in the internet sector. Um, one is uh, the, um, the gaming, gaming content, mm -hmm. and then the other one is the uh, social interaction applications. Mm -hmm. um, companies such as Tencent, for instance, they acquired assets in California as well as in countries like Korea. Um, and as you probably have, have noticed, the, there is a large repurpose of, of, of some of the cacao-related content on WeChat. Uh, and these are things that some of the very smart things Tencent has done by investing in cacao and then uh, try to get um, a chance to observe how they are able to monetize the, uh, um, basically the, the, the social platforms and turn it into a monetization engine. Uh, the other one is uh, the, the, the social platform itself. Um, the Chinese people love to text each other. They love to interact with each other. Um, this is not only, I think, I mean, I think to a large extent, this is also um, a, a, a culture that has been developed by the, by the text, by basically uh, SMS uh, 10, 20 years ago. Um, and then many of these technologies now you can widely see here uh, in, in China, and then that's also um, some of uh, the, the investments that uh, um, some of the major Chinese companies are acquiring um, in the US. Um, Tencent, for instance, I think it was at one point acquired ICQ, uh, probably also for, for, for the same reason. Um, and then uh, these applications and technologies can be ported into China and can be very easily uh, integrated into the, into the existing platforms. Uh, and then the channel for big corporations in China to do that um, is no different than uh, acquisitions happens in the US, which is to large extent they happened at a, bo at a boardroom. And then the Chinese um, tech companies are also increasingly sophisticated uh, to get access to the venture community in the US and through the introduction of the venture backers, they're able to talk to the companies. And many of these transactions took place behind the scene, like this. What's interesting is in May this year, I, I actually took one of our clients to Europe um, to look at the film industry 
and potential uh, foreign direct investment into China. Uh, one of the challenges that we met with this client when we're going through various studios in Paris and London and uh, in Cannes, actually the biggest challenge for foreigners to invest in China is, is the biggest concern is talents and also government regulations. So we talked a lot about Guangxi earlier on. Whilst it's important to build a Guangxi in China, but we all know political parties or, or politi political leaders do get changed regularly. So do you see that still a main part in terms of attracting investment? Because you could be investing a lot of time and building the Guangxi or relationship with the government and they change. And because the local talents, would they really stand up to the challenge? Actually, you know, the, the regulation, you know, is always, you know, behind the, 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 the market, you know, so we see, you know, change of the government, the, the, the policy is actually very stable. So, you know, so that's what we have been telling our, you know, uh, uh, foreign friends that, you know, you, you know, you shouldn't expect any dramatic regulation change in the, in the media sector. You now, for, for, from the uh, new administration, you know, the media se sector, why it's important now, it's not in the, you know, you know it's uh, at the forefront of the, of the government priorities. You know, they have you know employment, they have you know economic growth, they have many issues. Uh, but you know, so you know, the reg although the regulations stay the same, but under the surface, things are, are change uh, uh, relatively fast. You know, with uh, with the internet, with the entrepreneurial uh, entrepreneurship of, of Chinese people, and, and with the demand, particularly for from from the, from the youngsters. So uh, you know there are you know uh, uh, more and more opportunities in, in in this sector. So you shouldn't wait until the regulation change for you to get in. If you don't get in, you will be late. Anything to add, Perry? Uh, I, I I completely agree with him on this. Good. Any questions from the floor before I close the panel? Okay. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank, you. Thank, thank you, Ning, Perry, and Peter. Uh, let's give them a round of applause.